Oh, these guys are in a premier position. Or no, wait, that's beneath me, isn't it? <coughs> or no. Monster Premier Division. That must be like really far down there then. Yeah, that's really far down there. So we should beat these guys pretty easily. Beijing's trans... As somebody who uh, I've had a lot of opinions about this, as somebody who uh, I've had a lot of opinions about this, uh, there have been a few times I've been canceled. Um, uh, you know, one time I didn't even know what happened, so I, I didn't know that I was a bad boy. I, I only found out about it like a couple days later after I got canceled, and at that point it kind of already wore off, so it didn't matter. So uh, we're going to go ahead and watch this, and we're going to see what it is. Here we go. For the first time in Mogul Mail... Here's new Diablo 4 gameplay out. Yeah, I'm going to watch it after this, okay? That's not an attack to just stop the Oscars. That's an attack to end me. That the past is relevant with you with underage girls. Absolutely no, it's not. It's fair. I think I'm sorry. always hold our... I'm sorry. I love how people are like, bro, I'm getting canceled. Bro... You're a groomer. You broke the law. What do you mean you're getting canceled? It's like some bank robber is getting arrested after they, they find out that he's got a bunch of marked fucking uh, dollars. He sells them back to some other person. And he's like, bro, bro, I'm getting canceled. Like this cancel culture shit is, yeah, I'm getting in the car. Yeah, this cancel culture shit is out of control, guys. Like what the fuck? God damn. 
It's like people overuse can getting canceled. Bitch, you broke the law. Also putting a hierarchy over who can be offended. Now I'm offended. The story that was being told about me won, even though it wasn't true. That's not activism. That, that's not bringing about change. This is not me. I'm fighting for my life. life. Watch it. The origin story. So I wanted to start this documentary by defining the term cancel culture. It's the practice of publicly rejecting, boycotting, or ending support for people because of their morally unacceptable views or actions. Basically, it's a modern form of ostracism, which means to exclude or banish from a group or society, which dates back to ancient Greece. This is Sparta! Athenian leader Cleisthenes created the punishment of banishing people to prevent a single person from becoming a tyrant. Saddam Hussein's pride. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Where's Kanye? Joseph Stalin dominated the Soviet Union. The way they would do this is similar to our modern day elections, only no one wants to win this one. Citizens of Athens. would write the name of their candidate on a piece of pottery. Six I feel like, yeah, like we've always had cancel culture. Like one narrative I want to make sure that we don't have is that uh, you want to hear an element of cancel culture? This is this weird thing that we used to do for cancel culture. It was called the Salem Witch Trials, okay? And so if you had too many cats, that's probably, yeah, she's probably a witch. So, yeah, I, I mean, we've always, we've always, yeah, set, set her on fire. Like, let's just set her on fire, see what happens. 6,000 votes would be cast, and the person with the largest number of votes would be banished for 10 years. I like that. That's really good. So, maybe we could do something, maybe Elon Musk should have something like that on Twitter. Where, like, there's a Twitter vote where, like, the top five most annoying accounts on the website would get voted off every year. The only problem is that if I, I know that if he did that, everybody would vote him off immediately. Even, even his own fans would do it because of the meme. They would do it just because it's fucking funny. When they came back after their time was served, it was as if nothing ever happened. Their citizenship was still theirs and the people of Athens welcomed them back with open arms. I don't know if the same can be said about cancel culture today. Now, the term cancel culture is everywhere. Cancel culture. 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 It first started roughly around 2017 after the idea of canceling celebrities for problematic behavior became popular. Nah, uh, this was way before then. This started happening in like uh, 2010. And I, I feel like a lot of people don't have the uh, the context for this. Yeah, well, like, yeah, Kanye, I don't think is on this one. Um, and maybe he was. I, I wasn't really paying attention. But anyway, uh, it, it's like obviously, obviously this has always happened. Like it happened to Mel Gibson back in the day. He was first. Oh, I, I wasn't even really paying attention at that point. Merriam-Webster correlated tequila. the rise yeah. of cancel culture with the Me Too movement. Hi, my name's Tarana Burke, and I'm the I'm, fa I, just, founder of the Me Too movement. Thousands of women are you. I, I think that's such a, I think that's so dumb. I, I really dislike that because it compartmentalizes getting canceled into like women who have had like bad experiences with men or things like this. I think that it causes people to take it less seriously. Using two words on social media to identify themselves as survivors of sexual harassment and assault. This is global. Then, it gained more steam. Google Trends show that there was almost no search for the phrase cancel culture until... Well, that's not really... I mean... 
people didn't have a phrase. They didn't call it cancel culture whenever reporters lost their job for questioning the Iraq war or the invasion of Afghanistan or Iraq or fucking any of those Libya or any of these places. Like, but yes, this absolutely happened. Just because we didn't call it cancel culture back then didn't mean that it didn't exist. This absolutely has existed. And before that, we had McCarthyism. Before that, we had a bunch of other shit, too, like Salem witch trials, fucking church, things like that. Joan of Arc, she got canceled. That didn't go very well. I'm pretty sure they didn't they didn't call it cancel culture back then. 2018. Soon after, celebrities including Taylor Swift and Kanye West were being canceled. There we go. Writer Jonah Bromwich explained that almost everyone worth knowing has been canceled by someone. And finally, I think that's probably true. Yeah, he's probably he's right about that. Most people, there are there's somebody out there that doesn't like them. That's effectively what they're saying. Primo, thanks for the ten subs. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think that's accurate. The best definition of canceled was posted on Urban Dictionary. So if cancel culture started as a means to punish people who've done regrettable things, then what's so bad about it? I really dislike the narrative that this video is pushing by putting somebody like R. Kelly in the video. I think that this is a it, it's not a very good example because like R. Kelly is is literally a molester. He's a predator and he broke the law in many ways. And I think that is totally different than somebody saying something that is racist five years ago. Totally fucking different in my mind. Yeah, he's a literal sex offender. A young boy, R. Kelly, is accused of abusing. Anti-Kelly rallies outside of Sony Music headquarters in New York. Comedian and actor Kevin Hart is stepping down from his duty. I have made the choice to step down from hosting this year's Oscars. I've been apologize for your tweets of old. We're going to have to move on to find another host. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. There are two cases I want to bring up. Okay. Let's take a look at the timeline of R. Kelly's demise. In 1994, he married Aaliyah. The catch is in 1990. It's like, bro, if that's not self snitching, I don't know what is. Honestly, I really don't. I don't know what is. Like, that is like, bro, it's right there in front of you. 94, he married Aaliyah. The catch? He was 27 and Aaliyah was 15 years old, but faked being 18 on the wedding certificate. In 2002, he had two other court cases which involved illegal acts with minors, and the cases were settled with R. Kelly paying a lot of money to cover them up. Jesus. In the same year, he was charged with 13 counts of producing illegal child videos. Although Bro, there like, wasn't what's enough. What's so crazy about this is I remember I watched like a video. It was like. You know, like you watch a documentary on like Charles Manson or, or like Jeffrey Dahmer. I guess now they made that into a whole series. And it's but this is like a documentary about all the bad shit that R. Kelly did. And I looked at it and it was like episode one of seven or nine. It's like you made an entire season documentary about this. This shit's as long as Game of Thrones. And it's just one dude evidence to find him guilty. Gloria Allred, the lawyer who represented several of his victims, explained that of all the predators I have pursued, R. Kelly is the worst. Finally, in 2018, R. Kelly was canceled. Hashtag mute R. Kelly. Now let's take a look at the second case. How are you doing, Ken? How are you, big guy? What's up, man? All right, R. Kelly, you're the man. In July of 2009, Kevin Hart sent out a series of
Beautiful. Oh, from Turner again. Yep. There's no wrong. Watch this woman. Woman. That's what I'm telling you about. This guy right here. What? That's what I'm telling you about. Got this guy right here. So, uh, this is my main man. No, stop it. Oh, what? I call bullshit. He's he cheating. No he has hacks. He has IRL hacks. If you wanted snuggles and attention, you would be in my lap right now. You want to Oh, another one. He's playing out of his mind right now.
There we go. Hmm. ...of tweets regarding homosexuality. Fast forward to almost 10 years later, on December of 2018, Kevin Hart was announced as the Oscars host. Within hours, Twitter users began reposting Kevin's old tweets and jokes saying that he never apologized for them, therefore should not be allowed to host the Oscars. Articles upon articles were being formed about Kevin being homophobic and unwilling to apologize for it. And why, why not just apologize? I mean, that, that's the thing is like, I think it's these are like two way different things. Number one, like Kevin Hart and R. Kelly. R. Kelly belongs in jail. Like, it, like, come on, like, it, yeah, like, he belongs in jail. Like, that's, like, this is not, you're not getting canceled, b bitch, this is the law. Number one. Number two, uh, with Kevin Hart, I do think that it's fair, like, if you're a gay person, that it would make you uncomfortable if somebody was hosting the Oscars that has genuine resentment against gay people. Now, making a joke about it is one thing. Kevin Hart is a comedian, okay? I'm not saying that he's not. But it depends on, like, what kind of joke it is. Because, like, you guys know, like, the kind of jokes that, like, actually racist people tell. And it's like, hey, well, you know, uh, well, I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not going to say one, right? But you know what I'm saying. It's like, it's not even really funny. It's just, like, talking shit about a minority. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to say it. Please do. No, 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 bro. Like, I... I'm telling you guys, like, as I said, 20 year veteran of the internet. Okay. I, I, I know every joke and every, every fucking word people can use all of that. Actually, I do not know all of them. My dad knows more than I do. Um, but you know, besides that, he, uh, you know, he's told me many of them as well too, from like whenever he was growing up. 
Uh, back in the day, my dad, uh, you know, this sounds fucking nuts to think about, but like my dad told me that like whenever he was growing up, they had water fountains for like white gentlemen and black men. Straight up. That was my dad growing up in Florida. Isn't that crazy? Difference between uh, jokes and blatant racism? Yeah. And, and, like, for example, like, if I tell a joke and it upsets somebody, I would tell them it's a joke. You know, it's like, I, it's not it's not an apology. By telling somebody it's a joke, it's not a big deal, right? Like, you're not apologizing to them, but at the same time, if you say something's a joke, it means that you don't mean it. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, that that's like, that's two very different things. On that note, Kevin Hart stepped down from hosting the Oscars and proceeded to apologize. And apologize. I had to address it when I did Get Hard promo with Will Ferrell because of my joke that I had about my son. And apologize. I had to address those tweets in 2012. And apologize. Kevin, apologize. I think the reason why he apologized so many times is because everybody wants to, like, this cancel culture and, and like, the uh, fucking like the vitriol that it creates is like really great engagement for people so they want to have a sound clip of kevin hart talking about why he said gay people are bad you, you see what i mean because that's good for their it, it's good for their interview it's good for their show so it, people acting in self-interest will create this outcome it's not even about an ideology Josh, your tweets of apologizing old. is a mistake no I, no it's not the thing is, if you're actually sorry for something that you did, like I've done things that it's like, I, I would say like, that was just dumb. Like I shouldn't have done that. I don't, I don't know why I said that. Right. It's whatever. Like I, I, that, that's my bad. Like, that's it. I feel like the longer that you spend making an apology, the worse it gets. That's it. Yeah. The, the worse it gets. Like if you just say, yeah, like, yo, I fucked up. That's my bad. Sorry. That's it. Yeah. Cause you, you don't need to worry about it. This is not the first time this has come up. I've addressed it. It's onion, so no matter how many times you keep peeling it, there is no end to it. I apologize. Apologize again. I said I apologize before. Did Kevin Hart deserve that backlash just as much as R. Kelly did? Well, obviously not. R. R. Kelly's a literal sex offender marrying underage girls. Kevin Hart made a bad joke. Like, this is a, a fucking course not. How's this even a question? One problem with cancel culture is that it cannot be monitored. In a criminal justice system, the aim is to judge a crime fairly and create a punishment that matches the crime. And while it's judge a crime fairly and create a punishment... Damn, bro. Damn, bro. Holy shit. <laughs> This is where Fulcrum got his video ideas from. Right here. Yeah, faded than a hoe. Right here. I hate whenever people come in and say that shit randomly. But I will absolutely say, like, this is it. <laughs> yeah. You smoke? <laughs> Fucking lights it up, shall we? <laughs> there it is. Oh, my God. Just right there on the fucking stand. Holy shit. Anyway, um... Yeah, obviously, like, um, the court of public opinion is really bad. And the way that court of public opinion works is harmful for a lot of people. Because for a lot of people, it's more important for them to be right than to be accurate. Didn't you, uh, didn't you say the moment you apologize, it makes you vulnerable to lose? The best apology is just make, keep making better content. Why is he to apologize making jokes? I'm just genuinely asking, though. Well, I think that the reason why is that there's never going to be a one or two paragraph thing that I say that's just like, oh, okay, this is the way the world works now. I think that, yes, whenever you apologize for something, sometimes it does make you vulnerable, but other times it's not that big of a deal. You can apologize for something, and it's like, yeah, it's my bad. I shouldn't have done that. That's all there is to it. I think it's mainly apologizing for something that you're not actually sorry for. Because if you apologize for something that you're not sorry for, you'll probably end up doing it again. And then whenever you do, those people will be even more mad at you after you gave them the power. 
but yeah, public opinion, and I mean, there's a reason why it's the court of public opinion and not just the court. There's a reason why it's called mob justice and not justice. It's because it's not fair, and it never is. Punishment that matches the crime. And while it's not perfect, when you compare that to cancel culture, I think the point is clear. The crime doesn't usually match the punishment. I'm not saying that Kevin Hart has never been at fault. He said things he regrets, but he's learned from them. He has rebuilt his reputation and vowed to never make those jokes again. My friends, some of the best lessons we ever learn, we learn from our mistakes. But does cancel culture allow us to do that? I want to apologize to the internet. I owe you an apology. I'm only here to say that I'm so sorry. Sorry oh, for anybody who I've ever offended. I apologize so deeply. I want to make this video to say sorry to everyone. Continue to grow and mature. I do think that there are a lot of people out there that do make, make mistakes. And then a lot of them, like, they do feel bad about it. And people keep bringing it up and hating on them for it. Like, yeah, this absolutely happens. It happens regularly. Uh, yeah, sure. Like, it, it's it's not crazy. Of course, that's what happens. Uh, freedom of speech. I mean, oh, oh, Nick, thanks for the raid. Thank you very much, Nick. I appreciate that. Yeah, I didn't see that until now. Thank you very much. Just montage the fakest apologies. I don't give a fuck about that, whether the apology is real or not. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, like, the point is that mainly because of Twitter. Well, it's like in LSF. I think LSF is a really good example of this. Is like whenever somebody does something that is disagreeable, Every single thing that they had previously done that was also disagreeable is brought up in the comments and people start talking about it. And, and like this happens on Twitter. It's just like, I mean, this is with users. I'm just using a good example because that's a place that I think a lot of people are familiar with here. But like Twitter is the same thing is that people will constantly bring up and, and like bring up all the old baggage every single time, every single time. And it's just unfortunate, but that's the way people go. And th the truth is, like, yes, it's bad whenever that happens. But at the same time, like, whenever you're a public figure, whenever you make content online, that's what happens. Yeah, Kevin Hart's not been canceled. He just made a movie and released a new comedy special. R. Kelly wasn't canceled. He was criminally prosecuted. Yeah, I agree with that. Free speech, define it. It's money. Well... I mean, I, I don't want to define it. I'm saying we're striking balance on between you know, identifying stupid cancels and sound cancels. Yeah, there are a lot of people that get canceled for good reason. Who are they to tell me what I can and can't do? I mean, we're better. To well, that's the thing is that they're nobody. And that's why Quentin Tarantino still makes great movies like Django Unchained that are massively politically incorrect. They have like like really really like super intense themes to them. People like he, he literally used the N word with the hard R in Pulp Fiction. Nobody gives a fuck about it. And, and then Ricky Gervais goes up and was at the Oscars. He calls everybody in the audience fucking pedophiles or or groomers or something really bad or stupid, <laughs> and everybody claps for him. And then he just keeps going. Yeah. So it's it just yeah. It, it, yeah, the, you can't get canceled. The only way you can get canceled truly, there are two ways that a person can be truly canceled. Number one is if you get deplatformed. Number two is if you become a version of yourself that is not true to what your audience believes you to be. Like Boogie is an example of this. hear different ideas and argue as the cultural shift toward political correctness has swept through our society the expectation for us now is to be socially aware people broadcast their every thought and we hold people accountable for what they say online but it doesn't really work that way the main issue with cancel culture is that it does not allow people to learn from their mistakes Individuals are more well, people don't want to have somebody else learn for their mistakes. They just want to find somebody to burn at the stake. That's it. I don't know why this is such a hard concept for people to understand. 
We've been doing this ever since ancient Greece. This is nothing that's new. And by the way, this is the first time that it was recorded that it happened was in ancient Greece. Before that, everybody did it before then, too. Like, I'm sure that all the cavemen would get together and then one day Grug, nobody really liked him. We think that his head has demons in them. And so we're going to break his head open so the demons leave our camp and that way it will rain again. And guess what happens? Everybody gets their clubs out and Grug is dead. I can guarantee you that shit happened. Often did not shunned and no longer supported, no matter the apology. But as humans, we need to make mistakes to grow. In a recent study, Gabriela Stoya looked at math classrooms to consider the impact of mistake-friendly versus mistake-unfriendly environments. They found that when...
probably gonna switch to my 424 here. I'll do it at the 55th minute, I think. Or you know what, I'll do it now. Hmm, okay, what is Roberts? He's a striker. Alright, I'll go ahead and put Fleming in. Actually, he's not as tired as him, so I'll take him out. Um. And Roberts needs to get replaced. I'll put Taylor in, I think.
Oh my gosh. You know what? Just keep it on him. Fuck it. We'll do this, though. We'll drop these guys back. Fuck yeah.
We're going to go back to the tactics here. It's offside trap. I think we're going to go with this going forward. So he'll need to come up here. Um, Leonard, or no, McDonald. Mm. You can stay in. This looks good enough, I think. All right, I'm going to save this and start playing some WoW. Hey, woman. Woman, are you still making me a sandwich? So I'm ready for it. Yes. Students perceive their classroom as accessible.